Salmon is a go-to fish when you're trying to be healthy and sometimes you can run out of ideas of how to make it. So today I'm gonna to show you four recipes that are really quick, really delicious, and really good for you. This takes inspiration from kind of like a Tom Kha Gai, one of my favorite Thai soups. So I wanna make a simpler, kind of salmon version of that. Uh, so we're gonna build kind of like this beautiful coconut-based soup to which we're gonna add um, our cubed up salmon. Aromatics, we have some lemongrass. Just kinda, kinda open that up. You can chop this up if you want. I'm just gonna tie it out like this so that eventually I can just fish it out quite easily. Next, very simple, we have some ginger, some onions, some garlic, and some red chilies. We're gonna chop all that up. Next, we're gonna be using um, some lime leaves. Uh, you can use some fresh ones, or you can use some dried kaffir lime leaves as well, uh, which we can add to the broth later. And that's pretty much good to go. Um, we're gonna slice up our mushrooms, shiitakes, spice them in two. We're doing just one big bowl today, and then you have also some oyster mushrooms that you can use. Pan, nice and hot. So let's just brown everything into the pan first. Help that along with a little bit of salt. Once it's nice and brown, can go ahead and transfer it. Pan is still hot there, so I think that's better to get a little bit of texture and color. Okay, pan has cooled down. Bit more oil. Start off with the ginger. Toss in our garlic, some onions, lemongrass goes in. In we go with our coconut milk. If you're freaked out of this much coconut milk, not my problem, but also, um, you can thin it out by doing half and half. You can add chicken broth, seafood broth, you can add water with your coconut cream. It's gonna be building so much flavor. I'm gonna use the odd pieces of fillet that I have. You can use tail, you can use salmon jaw. Um, anything really works for this recipe. So all we're gonna do here is chop things up into cubes. Do the same thing here. If you have leftover scales like I f seem to be having, no worries, you can always kind of wash them off under some cold running water. This is the only time I'd be comfortable seasoning things because the coconut cream is reducing a little bit, it's getting thicker, so now I know more or less what the soup needs. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of fish sauce, maybe half a teaspoon, and then a little bit of chicken stock, just to thin out the soup a little bit. Let that simmer away for about 15 minutes, and we should be good to go. All right, all right, all right. We're almost done. Um, it wouldn't be a Thai-inspired dish if we didn't use a little bit of sugar. Let's give it a last little taste. That's delicious. Uh, pretty much ready to plate. So you could kind of just go whoop, um, but we're gonna try to make it look pretty. Um, so what we're gonna do is fish out our salmon pieces first, place that in our bowl. At this point, they should be really nice and tender. Give this a try. I'm gonna try just a sauce. Just a sauce first. Oh, that's so good. It's creamy. It has a spice kick to it, which is really nice, but it's properly balanced. Let's try that salmon. I love big chunky pieces of salmon, just like this. If you need a little acidity, a little bit of lime. It goes a really long way, and that contrasts the flavor would be absolutely beautiful. Quick dish, but so much flavor. I'm a firm believer that the next evolution of meal planning is gonna be sheet pans. So meal planning is a lot of times you're, you're searing, you're steaming, then you're assembling. Sheet pans, you're literally doing everything 
in a sheet pan, the downside is you need an oven um, to make it happen. Um, but what's great about it is that all that flavor is concentrated on the sheet pan. It's very limited in terms of the mess. Um, and just by putting basic ingredients, you can make something really tasty. Um, so today we're gonna make like a sheet pan salmon dish. Slice up some sweet potatoes. To this, I'm going to add a nice big potato. We get our sheet pan out, lay this flat, some salt, and some olive oil. Get messy with your hands here to spread everything, not only on every piece of potato, but also making sure that you're spreading some olive oil onto that sheet pan, and then just kind of layer them. They don't have to be like really perfect, but the important thing is they're not overlapping, so we get the same amount of crispiness throughout. So we're doing this in a convection oven. Um, usually in a regular oven, you do 400 Fahrenheit, so about 200 centigrade. Um, but since it's a convection oven, it's a bit stronger, so you can kind of like lessen it by 20 to 25 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So that goes in for 30 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. Um, our potatoes won't be cooked through, um, but this is the right time to add in our salmon because the salmon is going to take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes to cook. These are quite thin, so I actually think this is my cook a little faster. Um, so we're gonna place our salmon right on top. Salmon goes down, skin side down. A little bit of olive oil, some salt. Honestly, you guys, this is as simple as it gets. And then this goes in until it's cooked through. Hi. Salmon should be ready. Potatoes perfectly cooked. Sweet potatoes, nice and crispy. Let's put one salmon down. One salmon standing up. And this is such a simple way of cooking. And it's, what's cool about it is that you can literally use any ingredients or vegetables that would do great in a sheet pan or um, in the oven just like that. Sour cream, let's say you wanna make this for breakfast or brunch, let's make it more breakfasty brunchy. Um, and then finally, some parsley. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to add pork cake, you could probably add pork cake to this and it'll be just as good. Um, but just as is, beautiful plate, make you happy, make you feel healthy inside. Salmon. The fish roll just adds a little, a pop of like saltiness and brightiness, which is really nice. Really simple, really versatile. Don't limit yourself to the ingredients that I showed you today. Use this as a base technique for anything you have at the house. Golden rice is probably one of my favorite ways to make fried rice. It has a slightly different process than if you were gonna make a Chinese fried rice or Filipino fried rice. Um, here what we're gonna do is separate our eggs um, and we're gonna use the yolks first with the rice before cooking it, making it golden. The more orange your yolks, the cooler this is gonna look. Mix those egg yolks, mix the whites a little bit, just to make sure that everything is combined, and set both of these aside. Next, just quick little prep on what we need. Some white onion, some garlic, and then we're also gonna need some spring onions. Next, we have some beautifully cooked rice here. Uh, this is three cups of short grain or Japanese rice. Egg yolks go straight in. Mix that. Really quickly, oil in a really hot wok. Start with your pieces of salmon, skin down. Season that with a little bit of salt. So think of this kind of like when you're, you know, in a Japanese teppanyaki restaurant or anything where they do anything in a hot plate. Kind of moving the cube around so that all the surfaces get a nice brown color. We're gonna set that aside, add in our onions and our garlic. I don't want to cook this down too much. I just want the natural sweetness to come out, um, but still retain some of that bite and acidity, uh, which is gonna really pair really well with the salmon. And here, we're basically good. See, they just have a little bit of color, but they're still kind of white, which is where I want it to be. I'm gonna fish all this out, and then we can start cooking the rice. By mixing it aggressively right from the beginning, we we'll just make sure that those grains of rice kind of separate. Once the yolks are pretty much cooked through after two to three minutes, we're gonna go ahead and add in the whites right in the middle. 
and quickly scramble those. Once it's fairly scrambled, start mixing that in with your rice. So you should have kind of cool strands of eggs running throughout the rice. Making sure nothing sticks to the bottom and nothing gets kind of brownish and burnt. Add back our onions. And our garlic. Mix that in. Add our spring onions. Mix that in. And then add back our salmon. Mix that. And you're pretty much done. Rice is nice and fluffy and separated. Salmon is perfectly cooked. Nothing says Japanese fried rice to me like some furikake. You put a lot of furikake. This to me looks so good. Let's try just the rice first. Sweetness of the onion. And well, it looks cool. We just cooked this rice. It wasn't day old rice or anything, but it worked perfectly fine. Big piece of salmon. Oh, yeah. This is so good. Salmon burgers or fish burgers in general, I feel, don't necessarily get enough credit. Um, if you don't feel like having a beef burger, a pork burger that might feel a bit greasier and heavier. You could flip it and do a salmon burger. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's healthier because you're still eating with lots of bun and kind of like butter uh, to make it really tasty. Um, but at the end of the day, the protein is slightly leaner and slightly better for you. So it is, it is a healthier option. It doesn't mean it's healthy. First thing I wanna do is very quickly make a really quick pickle. You can buy gherkins or pickles that are ready made if you want. Or you can just really thinly slice some pickles, uh, some cucumbers rather. So you want them like this, so thin enough that they kind of bend. Too thick, perfect size, right? So a couple slices like that. Perfect. Little bowl, cucumbers go into the bowl. Lots of salt. Don't freak out, we're gonna remove the salt really quickly later. Sugar. Mix, set that aside for at least 15 minutes, so perfect while we finish the rest of our prep. Next, we're gonna work with our salmon. Two fillets, remove the skin. So one of the things that we wanna make sure um, that doesn't happen when you're cooking a fish burger is that the patty kind of just goes all over the place. Um, so one way you can do that is whatever amount of salmon or fish that you're using, um, you're gonna make one third of that really mushy and that's gonna bind the rest of the burger. And then this can be nice and chunky. So cut that up. So this for me is what I consider chunky. So if you stopped here at this point, this would break up into the pan. So now we get it mushy. It'll get to a point that your knife won't kind of be enough anymore. So you can actually use a spoon or a fork to just kind of mash it. So the other two thirds can be chunky. So why would you want some chunky in there also? It just gives you kind of like little air pockets and little pockets of crispness when you're cooking it. Perfect. So you should have something now that will hold together, hopefully, when it cooks. You can help that further by binding it. Um, you can bind it with eggs and stuff like that, but I'm honestly just gonna go very classic with some garlic, some ginger, um, some salt, and then some mayonnaise. Now we can fry it. Hot pan, get our oil nice and hot. Cast iron on the side is also getting hot. Uh, we're gonna toast our buns there to get it nice to seal. Um, always are important, first and foremost, to add butter and spread it on your buns. It'll just give you a nice even bun toast. Okay, our pan is nice and hot. Burger goes right in. Cook that down. And then after that, all we gotta do is assemble. Don't forget about your pickles. Let's try the broken one. If I tried it like this, super salty, right? So what you wanna do is take them, squeeze out a little bit of that excess, and then we're gonna run this under some cold water. As 
So while cooking the salmon, and then you add some mozzarella or some grated cheddar, uh, this is some grated mozzarella, um, you add just like a small teaspoon of water. That steam, once covered, will just help kind of melt the cheese without burning anything, but also helps kind of finish the cooking process of the salmon. Uh, for a little spread that we have here, mayonnaise, furikake, sesame oil. Really basic, if you want some acidity, you can add some lime juice, you can add some vinegar, up to you. Now, all we gotta do, put everything together. Buns, perfectly toasted. Bottom button goes in first. You got that top bun, nice little browning in here, browning in here. For a cake mayo, this is what's gonna help kind of keep that, um, that patty where it needs to be. Crusty cheese around the salmon patty, which is really important, which I really like. Right on top, our squeezed out pickles. Some coriander or some parsley. You can even add some arugula, some roquette if you have it. You can add some sliced up onions if you want, but honestly, I think this as is, is perfect. Look at that layering, the textures, the freshness, the fattiness, the crispness of the bun. All these elements make a perfect burger. And for me, personally, I like burgers that I can hold with one hand and it's not kind of going all over the place and falling apart. So if I bite this, I should be able to get a clean bite. That's a good burger recipe. I really hope you guys enjoyed. It's there on purpose. If I don't want to wipe it off, I won't wipe it off. Okay, if I don't want to do this, I'll do that. Enjoy this. It means I'm enjoying the food. I hope you guys enjoyed all those salmon recipes. They're so tasty and they're really easy to put together. Try them out. Let us know what you think. Tell us in the comments. Follow a feature. Peace and love.